Now that I have some free time, I wanted to make this quick tutorial about making an ice explosion in Blender. It's fairly simple to do, so let's get started. Delete the default cube and add a sphere. The faces of the sphere are going to be used to emit the particles. So in edit mode, delete the faces you don't want and using proportional editing, flatten the shape a bit to make more of the particles go up. Add a particle system and in velocity, increase the normal velocity to make the particles fly out faster. To make it more like an explosion, set the end frame to 1 and the amount of particle to something more reasonable like 20. It should look something like this. Now it's time to start messing around with the look of this explosion. I want the particles to explode out fast and then slow down and drop slowly. Go into the physics tab and animate the damp to be 0 at the start of the animation and 1 at when you want the explosion to end. To make the explosion more like a drawing, go into the animation tab and change the dope sheet to graph editor. Using the T menu, set both points to Bezier curves and then make the line start off flat and then rapidly increase at the end. Mess around with this curve until you get something that looks good to you. This is what I ended up with. It is also a good idea to make the plane a collision object so that the particles will either bounce or die on hit. I chose to set the particles to die on hit. Don't forget to save. Add another sphere and give it the displace modifier. Give the modifier a cloud texture or something else very erratic. Increase the strength of the modifier to make a spiky ball and then apply it. Now animate the scale of this ball to make it look like it's exploding. With the ball selected, search for quick smoke or go into quick effects and object and select quick smoke. Resize the domain box so it encapsulates all the particles when they are the furthest away. In the domain settings, under gas, set both buoyancy and heat to zero. To make the particles work in the smoke simulation as well, Select the hemisphere and in the physics section select fluid. Here set it as an inflow and select the flow source to be the particle system. In the domain under cache set the end frame to be when the particles stop moving. I also like to change the type from replay to modular. When you click bake a rough simulation of the smoke should appear. Set the domain resolution to something like 64 to get a bit more detail in the smoke. Now it's up to you to make the smoke simulation look however you want. One thing I did do was animate the particle emission size to start off big and then decrease over the course of the simulation. This is also a good time to go back and change any of the particle animations or the sphere animations if you want any different looks with the explosion. Two extra things to add is that if the simulation seems a bit blotchy, increase the time step. And if the particles are emitting smoke before they've launched, animate their flow. When you're happy with your simulation, set the resolution to something big like 100 or 128. Under the cache settings, select where you want the output files to go and in type, select all. Make sure the format is also set to OpenVDB. Click bake all and let it simulate. You can now close this Blender project and open up a fresh one. In the new project, start off by deleting the default cube. Next, in the add menu, go to volume and import OpenVDB. Head over to where you saved the simulation and you will find the data in a folder called data. If you simulated a noise pass, you will find this data in the noise folder. Select all the files and click import. You should have something that looks like this. Add any object into the scene and give it the volume to mesh modifier. In the modifier settings, select the smoke as an object and this will cause the shape to wrap around the smoke. Play around with the threshold value to change the look of this object. If nothing happens, this is probably because the grid name that the modifier uses is wrong. To fix this, select the smoke and click on the little green cloud symbol and it will display all the possible grid names that you can use. Once you have the look that you're looking for and selected smooth shading, it's time to move on to texturing. When making a texture for a deforming mesh, it's best to make it procedural. This is because Blender has a hard time creating UV mapping for a moving mesh. So to get started making this material, go to the shading tab and add a new material. To create my ice material, I started off with a principal shader where the transmission was moved all the way up and a light blue color was added for the base color. I then added a noise texture with very high detail connected to a bump map connected to the normal input for the principal texture to create a very bumpy and rough surface for the ice. I then used a noise texture with very low detail to drive the roughness of this material. This adds more variety to the material. I then wanted to create some cracks in the ice, and using a Voronoi texture and a noise texture to then mask that Voronoi texture, I added it to another bump map and connected to this uh, principal shader. 
They are fairly hard to see, so I also connected this output into the transmission so that the cracks will also appear a bit lighter. So this is what my fairly rudimentary procedural ice texture ended up being. If you spend a bit longer and are a bit better at this than I am, you can get it looking a lot better, but it's functional for what I ended up doing, and from the correct uh, lighting position, it looks great. So I'm sticking with this. So this is the final node tree for my texture, so instead of having to pause early, you can just see the whole thing in one go. Also, don't forget to turn off the smoke inside of the explosion, otherwise it might appear in the render when you don't want it to. So now that you have your explosion, you can go off and do anything you want with it, but I still want to look at a few extra things you can do to improve it or make it look better. This is going to be in no particular order, but I still recommend you stay and watch the whole thing because uh, some of it could be interesting to you. Maybe add an explosion sound effect like or something similar. To make the explosion look better, you can add particles during and after the explosion to represent snow or, or snowflakes falling. Similarly to the particles, you can add smoke during and after the explosion to represent cold, uh, humid air f kind of falling down like when you open a, f a fridge. But that would add quite a lot of render time, so be careful. Another thing you can do is delay the mesh explosion with the smoke explosion to make it look like the smoke is leading the explosion and the smoke is turning into ice. I had a lot of trouble getting it to work and also the smoke inside the ice made the ice very dark and not look good at all. To make the ice look good, you have to shine light through it, so I positioned some area lights behind it to shine through the ice and show off that bumpy texture. There is also the light from the little capsule bomb thing and another blue area light inside to make the ice glow from the inside. When creating the initial particles for the uh, smoke explosion, you don't have to just use that little damp slider, but can use forces to make the particles do all sorts of crazy things like fly up and do twisty, twirly movements. However, you have to be careful as these forces will also affect the smoke simulation further on. So it might start moving and it'll look like the ice when it's frozen will continue to move. So make sure for the smoke simulation you turn the forces off. Damn, you actually watched all the way to the end. Okay, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Uh, I'm fairly new to it, so if there's anything you would like me to do differently, feel free to comment that. And yeah, thank you. Subscribe and 